and just like that, they buy it. They eat it up. You pander to them, you thank them. I mean, really, people, I thought you were a little bit smarter than that. I mean, it's just so easy wow. to say the name of the city. You cheer. Hey, oh, Stephanie, thank you. Stephanie, you just cheer. I just, mean, just come on. Welcome to the A Show. Welcome, welcome back to the A-Show. This is Justin Davis with my co-host, Mills. We are the kings of pro wrestling podcast. Of course, you're listening to the A-Show. Uh, we're back for another week. Episode yeah, 55. man. 55. 5-5. Five, five. I'm here watching my Knicks maybe win. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. You, are, you are telling everybody when the, when we record this. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a home. Listen, Knicks play all the time. Come on, <laughs> you could be recording this on Friday. We could be recording this on Tuesday. We could be recording this whenever. Then it, it's it, you know. Oh God! All right, another time out. All right, I'm not going to tell you who they're playing against, but yeah, uh, you know, go. I just hope they win. There we go. There we go. We, um, you never know. You'll never know when, when we're recording this show. Uh, we're back once again for another week of pro wrestling. Uh, news and, and and hot takes. Uh, last week, a lot of people mentioned last week that I sounded really tired. Oh, that's good. Because I feel like you did sound a little bit tired. You weren't uh, going to tell me? No, I told you. I told you before we recorded. I was tired, though. I was really tired. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> I, that's why I didn't even like... I was like... Remember before, I was just like, yo, you want me? And you were like, nah, I'm a professional. I got this. And... <laughs> You know, it, it maybe you were tired of the state of the world. Maybe you were tired of moving. Maybe you were tired that we had a cover crown. We half half ass covered crown jewel. Yeah, and it yeah, was happening, yeah. and we're just like, oh god, like I can't believe this thing is still happening. Like God. Um, but I mean, here we are. Here we are. Week fifty five. I'm I'm energetic. It's not eight a.m. Uh, and and I'm ready for this week. This is a this has been a huge couple weeks for wrestling it's going to get even bigger uh just in a week the wwe will be in la but unfortunately i won't be in la (laughs) for survivor series how you how do you plan that out (laughs) well i i figured that i had to i have to go home i'm the only reason i'm not going to be here so i'm going home and i've kind of sacrificed a lot of family time to do other stuff in the past two years and i haven't been home for two years and if i have to sacrifice this like wwe is always going to be back you know uh, I need to go. In L.A., some time. of course. <laughs> what? Yeah. Of course. So um, I I, uh, I chose family over the E, but I'm pretty sure that everybody in L.A. Uh, next week is going to have a great time. We're going to have a really big, huge show uh, with a special guest next week talking about Survivor Series. Um, I, I guess I can. And NXT TakeOver, too. And NXT yeah. TakeOver, yes. Which that that card has basically been revealed today, right? They, I think they revealed everything uh, today, right? Yeah, so on NXT, um, they recorded earlier today, uh, just to let everybody know when we're recording. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, they announced several matches. I mean, we got the War Games match, which, which just looks great on paper and, and had the great reveal last week with that sort of like backlot brawl um, or like, I don't know, like, what was that? Like cafe, cafe outside cafe, like, you know, yes, yes. something that brawl, incredible. Um so we had the War Games match, which will be Ricochet, Pete Dunn, and the War Raiders versus the Undisputed Era. Um, yeah, that was great. Back again. Mm-hmm. Um, we also had uh, announced Velveteen Dream challenging Tommaso Ciampa for the NXT Championship, which is, you know, we talked about a little bit last week about how this is like unfamiliar territory. This is really like the proven ground for Velveteen Dream. This is yeah, kind of he- like a culmination of like the last year. Yeah, he's got to pull up here because I think he's facing one of the top, really like the the another one of the top guys there at NXT and like the biggest heel that they've had probably ever. I think I think he's I think a lot of people say he surpassed Kevin Owens. I think he probably as- is. I mean, quite honestly, it's a I, I would say probably because Kevin Owens is a little bit on the you know in terms of heel side, it got a little bit stale towards the end. But I feel like also this is just a great. 
it, I mean, we talked about it last week, but this is just a great opportunity for Velveteen Dream. And I think he's really in his element right now. I think when he reaches L.A., he'll be re- like in full form, full power, everything sort of rocking and moving. So, yeah, yeah we'll see. And, yeah, we got there, there's a lot of people thinking that it might be his time. And uh, I think this match will, will prove it. I don't know if it'll win it, but I think it'll prove that it's his time to be kind of like the top face now that Johnny Gargano seems to have uh, flipped, and which leads us to the next match that they announced today was, or last week was Aleister Black and Johnny Gargano. Uh, of course, they revealed that uh, Johnny was the one who attacked Aleister uh, about a week and a half ago. And uh, we're here. I think this match is going to be incredible. I, I think, think it, well, God, I mean, I feel like this match, um, you know, I'll probably save everything on my thoughts for prediction, but it's just kind of like it's still very awkward to see Johnny Gargano attempting to embrace the like the dark side because he doesn't really seem like a dark person. Yeah. He just seemed like like we talked about a little bit earlier. He just seemed like someone who needs to ass beat. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so it's kind of just like ah, we'll see. We'll see if this is coming to Johnny. Um, What do you think about it moving so forward? I'm I'm all for it if it. You know, we're we're uh, we're creeping into prediction territory, but like I think that this will work for me if they do a line DIY again. I think that's the way that this works. I think it's a lot of people uh, or I know a couple people. What's up, Jake, that uh, don't feel as though this is the right move. But I feel like this was really the natural progression. There could really be nobody else. And you had to flip Johnny if you weren't going to give him the title. You just had to do it. No, I mean, I don't know. I really don't know because I feel like Johnny's such a pure baby face that got such natural support. And it's really rare that you find that. And you find that with very few people. I think Sami Zayn was one of those people, Becky Lynch. I mean, they've all turned heels at this point as well. So it's kind of like you got to go, you know, why did why did Dentel have to go crooked to took it? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, but it's like. These are people who are just like they're very natural. And I think Johnny Gargano, to me, it's a disservice to the character. I felt the same way when Sami Zayn turned heel. Um, Becky Lynch, I think she's on the fringe, but she's still a face. But I think she just kind of less turned heel and more tweaked her character. Um, But I feel like it's a, you know... I, I'm not I'm not fully for it. I can't say I'm fully for it, but I feel like NXT TakeOver War Games is the perfect opportunity to sell me on whatever yeah. this is. Absolutely. Uh, and then lastly, they 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 just announced Shanna Baszler, uh, Kyrie Sane, part, what, four, five at this point? It's got a couple parts to it. I mean, I it, it might be five. four, five, six at this point. Yeah, I because... think it's part five. They have a uh, <laughs> two out of three falls match. Two, uh, which two out of three falls, man. I'm excited for, Absolutely. I'm not um, a fan of two out of three falls match. <laughs> I, I think that this is just a natural, again, a natural progression of, of these two. And I think for a blow off, um, you, it'll, it allows you to do a lot of things with them and, and do a lot of callbacks to all their other matches. So I'll you definitely know be watching their older matches. I feel like they should have gone with a cage match, even though, Can't I mean, I guess the war, yeah, it's because of the war games. They already got two rings in there looking crazy. Um, but I, I think I would have been more like, yo, let's get this cage match going on just so you can have. But I don't think they fully built up, um, you know, the t- two other horsewomen. I still haven't gotten their names right, but they were uh, pretty. Jessamyn Duke and Marina Shafir. They were grilling William Regal on NXT tonight. I mean, I got to watch it. Like, I haven't watched it yet. They were like <laughs> looking him up and down. I was like, man, he's the GM. Relax. Like they wanted to scrap. I think they, they wanted, wanted to slap box. They wanted to beat his uh, ass. For sure. Yeah. But you, then, we don't know. All we know of Ru- William Regal's past is that he used to be, you know, some street brawler that like brawled in the streets. Like everything WWE has told us for like the past like 15 years. I don't know. Um, and then finally, we finally got it announced. They've been building this match for uh, three months, <laughs> four months. Uh, Matt Riddle and Catches Ono is official as of today. Uh, very excited for that. Very excited for that match. It's a cool. I mean. You know, what? You don't seem very excited for this takeover. Um, I'm 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 okay for this takeover. Matt Riddle versus Cassius Ono. I think you know I haven't seen much of Matt Riddle, so I don't know what to expect. I mean, his debut was cool, but it was a squash. Um, also, I'm not really you know, Uh-oh. Cassius <laughs> Cassius Ono, another one. I'm just like, all right, what are we doing? Where are we going? How does this end? Is he really? Is this just, you know, enhancement fodder, which it essentially probably ah, you know is. what he is. You know what he is. I, we talked about it before. Like, he's not gonna he's but, not gonna be he's not gonna beat uh 
obviously he's not going to be Matt and a, you know, spoiler there, but like I, if he's the gateway, he's been a great gateway. Yeah. He's been a great. Yeah. Gateway. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah, I guess. Um, I love the NXT talk we've had in the past two weeks. I'm pretty sure a lot of people, a lot of other people do. I think the fact that we do this show like in a different time for both of us now, allows us to talk about NXT right. more. And I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad about that. Well, next week on NXT, we get, uh, before i guess this is the go home show which i feel yes. like the go home show on nxts aren't you know i feel They're, like people tend to just really just like go brush over them they already are home <laughs> yeah <laughs> essentially <laughs> like we're here um but next week we get again a match i feel like probably should have been on the card i don't know why they can't have two women's matches on the nxt takeover card right um Bianca Belair is going up against um, the head. Uh, what does she call herself? Head baddie and head baddie in charge. I head baddie in charge. Uh-huh. Mia Yim. So that should be interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, NXT is a very you know interesting place. I mean, I feel like it has its peaks and valleys at times, especially when they're leading up to a pay per view and when they're not leading up to a pay per view, and it's kind of like when they're like you know teetering between like enhancement talent who is an enhancement talent, you know, the strange Keith Lee match every once in a while. Yeah, the great um, what are they? What's his name? Oni Lorcan and and Danny Burch. Oh my god, had a fantastic match last week against you know. Two guys. <laughs> Two guys. Yeah, it, it, I think it was the uh, was it the was it the Chinese talent? No, it was um. Bro, was it Mendoza and the other guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those guys. Yeah, those guys, man. Listen, <laughs> look how look how excited we are to talk about NXT. Kick hey, I'm, every... I'm super excited. I, I feel like we didn't talk about NXT enough. Uh, when I was kind of like on a different schedule there, True. but n- now we can because the show will already have aired. One hundred. Yeah. Um, yo, let's I get would... in. Hold what? on. I want to say RIP to Jose Lothario. Well, I was going to bring him up in, in uh, No Holds Bar, but we can we can start No Holds Bar with that. A word? Yeah, it's in the it's in the notes, kid. Oh, I skipped over it. Wow. I was so you, No, but I, I still brought it up. R- relax. All right. <laughs> <laughs> RIP uh Jose Lothario. I I can remember Jose Lothario being there, you know, in the training vignettes with Shawn Michaels. And I, I that's how I remember him. <laughs> That's all I remember of him. Apparently, he's like a Texas wrestling legend. Um, spent most of his career in the National Wrestling gonna, Alliance. Jim Cornette's going to kill you for saying apparently, by the way. Apparently. I mean, listen. <laughs> allegedly. History. <laughs> history is on his side. Um, you know, he managed Shawn Michaels during his first championship run in 1996 and even Russell Vader. Um, let's see. Let's see what's going on. Jose Lothario, man. I yeah, mean, man. It's, it's, it's memorable nonetheless. I mean, yeah, it's, he, a, it's a huge loss, really. It's it's, it's For, one of those, uh, you know, coming off of Shawn Michaels, just like impressive week of returning to the ring and then kind of getting this news. I wonder, you know, hearts out to him, hearts out to Jose Lothario's family and everyone going thus far. So, you know, just RIP to a Texas wrestling legend. Uh, speaking of Shawn Michaels, Crown Jewel, just quick thoughts. Uh, was this the worst pay-per-view of 2018? Did you watch it? I can't say because I didn't watch it. Yeah, I didn't watch it either. I didn't watch uh, it. Right, so here's, my, here's my experience with Crown Jewel. Um, we both agreed we weren't going to watch it, so I just opted not to watch it. It was not hard not to watch it because it's during a work day. Like, it's it's literally in, in my time zone. It's from 12 p.m. to, what, 4 p.m.? Something four, like that. Four, yeah. It's like a four-hour show. In the, in the middle of the work day. So that's my experience. I don't really have to watch it. Like, I can, you know, be productive at work. Um, mm-hmm. um, until I would get, like, tweets and alerts of, like, the Miz is out of the... And I was like, what is going on? As soon as I got, <laughs> got my Miz Google alert, it was like, the Miz is injured. I was like, no way. No way the Miz is actually injured. The Miz does nothing lethal in the ring. He is the <laughs> same worker. He's, essentially, he's wrestled for the last... In the WWE for the past, uh, I would say, close to like 14 years, if you count his like, you know, tough enough and like... Are we really w- going over the Miz's injury report? All right, hold on. <laughs> I'm injured. He's not. He hasn't gotten a single injury. He's never been injured. He's been out filming movies. He's been out doing that. Um, 
but he's never actually been injured. It's crazy. The way, the way he got injured is in the show. I saw a gif of it. It was so <laughs> crazy. <laughs> yeah. I knew it was selling the minute I saw the gif. I was like, oh my God, this guy. He literally makes sure he, he makes sure he lands first and then he decides to roll his ankle. And I was just like, this is Marine Six level acting. I can't tell you that. Marine <laughs> available next Tuesday. Um <laughs> wherever DVDs are sold. I don't wherever, know. Wherever uh, the straight to DVDs. I don't even think you got Blockbuster to go get that movie from anymore. Wherever your local bin. <laughs> <laughs> wherever your local bin that you occupy. Um, so they had they had this weird world tour tournament and Shane McMahon won. And which was weird. Was it? I, I didn't think, I didn't care. When I saw it, I said, oh, okay. And just I went about my day. Very, so here's the thing. To me, with this pay per view, I mean, most of it you didn't you you didn't have to see. It didn't matter. Uh, yeah. Tag team championships didn't change hands. It didn't really matter. Um, what else was featured on it? Um, the the World Cup tournament you really didn't really need to sit through that. It was like no. basically down in raw matches in tournament form. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah, I mean, The Miz. And then, you know, AJ Styles defeats Samoa Joe in, like, less time than ever. Like, he broke yeah. his previous Samoa Joe beating record. Um, but before Joe we get should to feel the- like a hoe. Joe should feel like a hoe for, like, losing at 13 <laughs> oh. minutes. Joe ho. Joe the hoe. Joe the hoe. I, you know what? I completely agree because I feel like... I mean, he's a he seems to be, like, the hand they need when they need someone terrifying to, to go lose. up against some. Yeah. Because the man will turn on the terrifying, you know, button like that, and then he'll get to the actual payoff match, and he'll lose. He's done it against <laughs> Roman Reigns, uh, Brock Lesnar, AJ Styles, others probably Seth Rollins probably. Um, you know, he's just been a guy who's just been like, I'm terrifying. Up to the point where it comes like something important, whereas they all lose. I don't. I don't agree with it, but here we are. This is two thousand. I'm two thousand eighteen. Are we? Are we looking for Joe to really be like the next guy? No, I, I don't think he could even push that right now. Just just the way he moves and stuff like that. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I again, this show is just just such a bad stigma about it. It's just like Hulk Hogan showed up, and I think that was the moment where I was like. <laughs> That was a thing. <laughs> yeah, he showed up, and then Triple H gets injured and and tears his, uh, I believe, his bicep. I believe. Can uh, we talk about that? the worst, the worst. I can I I couldn't remember a match where I saw gifts where so many things went wrong. Yeah, <laughs> like I didn't even watch the match, and I was like, "What is going on here? What?" Type I, I of- kind of I kind of want to watch the match. I can look to you watch the match i would love for us to watch the match together because we've never seen it before so we don't have a frame of reference no i mean at this point i mean i haven't seen i mean Shawn michaels is still doing kip ups we talked about that last week i didn't think he could do a kip up he did he's it. there doing kip ups. he's 50 something years old the man is incredible um the great the best worker in the match by far hasn't worked in like 10 years <laughs> compared he to the was other still, guy. i've seen a lot of people say he was still kind of like a, he was like a seven, and if uh, Shawn Michaels, he can't be a seven. You gotta be like a ten, you know. Shawn Michaels, I mean, Shawn Michaels is a ten when there's the drama, you know. Yeah. The drama of like he's got to be like. Remember in like when he returned back, he would have these matches where he just bleed profusely <laughs> yeah. every match. <laughs> he was on his flare like, shit. Yeah, that was the drama. That was the drama. He doesn't have much of the drama anymore. I mean, he's the old guy. Um, I don't know if I can watch him bald, but uh, back to Triple H. He injured himself. Uh, he had to get surgery. He got surgery on Monday. This effectively will take him out probably past Mania. We're, we're possibly going to look at a Mania where he actually misses it. I, I think he's been at the past the last four Manias wrestling. I um, mean, he's been at, yeah, he's been at the last couple. I think the well, yeah, he did. I was talking. I was thinking of that Ronda Rousey one, but then yeah. he beat that one. Oh my god. Yep. Um, I'm talking about 31. Yeah, 31. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so he beats Sting that one. Damn. Uh I what what did you think? A lot of people think that it was a Batista match. I really don't think that was what was being hand, uh angled. I, mean, I would have hoped it was a Batista match. I feel like the Batista match would have been fun, especially with, you know, <clears throat> if it wasn't a Batista match, Batista really just went into business for himself and just didn't, you know, consult anybody. Um, I don't think it, I don't think it was Batista. I think Triple H really like 
He wants to put over. Yeah, he guys. puts over. Yeah, exactly. He puts over people, and I think he. he uh, I mean, unless you're staying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> unless you're staying. Unless uh, you're staying. Thing is like, no, you don't need to go over. So I bet Triple H was like, the young guys need to go over. And I am younger than you by at least eight years. So um, I'm going over. <laughs> and I think that was his, you know, who's going to be here on Raw tomorrow night? Me or you? And Sting was just like, you know what? You're right. And then, um, and then, and then like Sting was like, I'm going to be. And then he said, shut up. <laughs> 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 but um, uh yeah i i i think he might have gone against like a i would have loved to see him go against like a finn or if kevin owens is back by then a kevin owens at that point i would have loved to see that i mean i think triple h wrestlemania plans it's a lot it's kind of you know he just picks a guy he really does i mean sometimes i who did he face last year oh he was the ronda Rousey ronda Rousey match that he made he made her right <laughs> sometimes he just picks a guy like it's a it's, it's I, I don't know um i don't know who it could have been i mean really with yeah. the with the atmosphere of wwe right now i really don't know who could have been Roman has really thrown everything out of whack yeah and we'll talk about that when we get to raw well but, we, uh, we can talk about it on crown jewel because yeah we had the universal championship match um brock lesnar it's your money brock <laughs> Brock Lesnar, universal champion again. Um, beat Braun Strowman in two minutes, my friend. It says, apparently he beat him before with the belt. Like he, he hit him with the belt. I have yeah. no idea. I have no recollection of this. Okay, so, so, okay. So, uh, Corbin hit Braun. I, I love this recap of a show we did not watch. <laughs> Just using my imagination. I mean, I can picture it all happening. Corbin but. hit Corbin hit Braun with a, the belt, and apparently B- Braun could not recover from this belt shot. He reminds you, Braun has been flipped in a car. He has been almost murdered. He he he's gone through much worse. He's delivered much worse. A championship, you know, belt, everything is wacky in Saudi Arabia. Apparently, yeah, uh, it, something was just weird over there. Must have been, you know, you know what? I'll I'll leave my political views to myself. Uh, <laughs> But it's it, <laughs> in terms of just this Brock Lesnar versus Braun Strowman match. I do believe that it's like to me. Do you feel like they made the right decision in terms of who they went with, considering that you know Braun Strowman is there every week and he probably has not yet you know won the Universal Championship, has been in contention multiple times. Well, whereas Brock Lesnar, we were you know we were led to believe that he was all but done with the WWE just you know six months ago. Um, I, I, I don't think, and I've, I've never been a fan of Braun being the champ. I thought this was the shoe in. I, I really, cause I mean, we all knew like Roman was probably retaining here, but, um, I, I think if they're not, if they don't feel safe with Braun being the champion, then they should put it on Brock. And I think, and I, and I'll bring this up. Like, I think Brock should be putting people over at this time in his run. I think he should really be putting people over. He has a nine title match against AJ. I think AJ needs to win that match. And I think at it, it, it's Royal Rumble, I think he needs to lose something. I think he either needs to lose, lose a title or lose a match. I think he needs to be – I don't think they need to book him dominant anymore. I think people are tired of it. As soon as you mention Brock Lesnar, he gets booed. Right. Well, here's the thing. We spent like the last probably – I mean, out of the entire, you know, time we've done this podcast, he's basically been WWE, you know, universal champion. Yeah. Uh, we spent the last probably like 10 months complaining that this meant the championship is no longer on raw and it makes raw did not feel interesting at one bit, but here we are champion and we're like arguing now, like, man, he probably is the better, you know, plan to go with, but now do we risk another, I mean, you know, who knows how, you know, what match Brock Lesnar has next. It probably won't be at the December pay-per-view. Um, we can hope Royal Rumble and maybe WrestleMania. I mean, well, it's got to be guaranteed WrestleMania, but maybe the Royal Rumble guaranteed WrestleMania. So who knows how long Brock Lesnar is actually going to stick around? Um, is, is, what does Raw do? Because they're essentially in a worse place than they were before as they have lost their top guy and they've lost their championship. In terms of where do you see like the next six months of Brock Lesnar, honestly? Because, the, you know, it, Raw is in a very you know, weird predicament where not only have, you know, they lost their champion now, they lost their top guy. So it's kind of like, what do we do with Raw and where does Brock Lesnar go? And what happens next? What do you, like, any idea? 
I think uh, if you're not going to give it to Braun, give it to Drew. Uh, mm. Have have Drew be that guy. I think they they position Drew so greatly to do this and have it be believable because mm-hmm. they've never faced each other before. Um, and I think that Drew just looks like a badass, and I would I'd be all for that. Um, I, again, I think Brock should be losing. He should definitely be losing to AJ. He should be putting people over. He should be looking not like so dominant anymore. Uh, I don't know if they do that, but I heard that his deal is through WrestleMania. So I wouldn't. Even, I I couldn't even tell you who his WrestleMania opponent would be at this Man, point. At this point, I mean, it's usually Roman Reigns, but like. Yeah. <laughs> Where do we go from here? Quite honestly, like it's a, to me, I've always had the idea of like maybe um, considering SmackDown has a couple great guys, move one of them to Monday Night Raw because I feel like we're really as great as Seth Rollins is and Seth Rollins is great and as great as Drew McIntyre is in terms of just like a quick fix of like they need the star power on Raw considering yeah. Brock Lesnar isn't there. I'm mm-hmm. like. You either move, you know, AJ Styles or Daniel Bryan to Monday Night Raw, in my opinion. That's just, you know, it, it's unfortunately like a short term fix. But it's like, to me, Raw kind of needs like a guy guy. Yeah, I think that. And, and I think and I agree. I, th- I think I mean, I would I would just go ahead and do um, the Bryan Brock match at this point. Yeah, I, I, same, same. Um, I think that I would mean, just that would be a crazy vibe, and I think it's probably the thing that's probably most anticipated. Quite frankly, something that hasn't been done yet and is most anticipated, and they could get real, you know, emotion behind it. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, speaking of AJ Styles, one year, congratulations to him. He's 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 uh, been the WWE champion for one whole year. Uh, it's been a long road. It's been a very weird title reign for him. I, I wouldn't even go down saying this is like one of the best title reigns of all time. No, in my opinion, it's just one of the longest. Yeah, um, <laughs> it's just long. <laughs> it's long. Um, yeah, I wouldn't say that. Uh, considering for like AJ Styles, the guy we you know imagine to have all these great matches, I think it, it's just been you know it, it's it's been you know think of it think of it like this. He first got the title. He had to face gender twice. Yes. Uh, then after that, he was losing non-title matches like crazy to uh, Kevin Owens and yeah, Stays. Yeah. <laughs> uh, then you had Nakamura, which we were like, okay, we're gonna take all of this punishment just so that we can get here. And that then went that went five matches, and it ended and went when like June, I think. Yeah. And then after that, you had Samoa oh, Joe for, perfect. yeah. Yeah, the little Russo. Um. And then it's been what? It's it's been pretty much Brian, oh. and that's it. It's kind of, you know, we think it would probably be more spectacular than it is, but probably considering the average age of everyone he's faced. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's probably, and I'm, you know, I'm not trying to be ageist or anything like that, but these are guys that are pretty much like, you know, their their formative years are really much behind them, and and now they're kind of like you know, easing into the second half or the, the you know, the the second end of their career. Um, but I do feel like, it, you know, it, it's a it's a monumental reign for AJ Styles. Who would have thought three years ago, four years ago, when he returned to the WWE, he would have a year championship reign. He'd be considered a guy, the guy, you know, on SmackDown. He's a guy. Like, he's, he's pretty much... But you look at Raw and SmackDown. I mean, Roman Reigns is A, and he's you know, one A or one B, whatever. One B, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> However you want to call it, I I think that's a it's a cool thing. You can tell you could tell that Vince really likes him. Yeah. And, uh, at the end of the day, it's it's you know it's it's always a, a a good thing when they get behind somebody that you never expected them to. But yeah, I mean, congratulations to AJ. Uh, monumental reign once again. Like we said, uh, let's let's speed into Raw and SmackDown here. Uh, it looks like for both of these shows, Survivor Series is just falling into place. They're just putting everything into place right now. It's kind of like, yeah, we have we've had about like four pay per views within the last two months. But yeah, I think they're they're understanding the you know I think they're accepting like the crowd is just like all right, we know it's Survivor Series in two weeks. We're just throwing everything together. Like 
It's literally the matches are just being announced. The people are just being, you know, it's not, there's no qualifying match. I mean, there's a little bit of qualifying matches, but it's, really, it's like, it's like impress me matches, which is weird. Yeah. It's good. You know, it, it, the Miz needs to be impressed. <laughs> <laughs> He's not an easy guy, you know, to impress, but you know, here it is. But I feel like, um, in terms of the raw side, I mean, what we have for Survivor Series, the Spar, Braun Strowman, Dolph Ziggler, and um, Drew McIntyre on the Survivor Series team. Which is pretty much the whole top of the card for the past four months. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> kind of weird, especially when you put Braun Strowman in there. Like, who would willingly put Braun? I mean, you want to win the match, most definitely, but it seems kind of like, considering... You know, Drew has kicked him over the last couple of weeks and all this other things. It seems kind of, you know, interesting to sort of put that together. Yeah, but, it, it is weird. Are, are you are you buying Drew's monster, like his monster push right now? I know we mentioned it during the like the Brock segment, but like, did, like, are you buying it? Are you fucking with it? You know, I think it would be more impressive. I think what they were heading towards is Drew McIntyre versus Roman Reigns. And I think that would have been a real test of like star power because you would have Drew McIntyre across the ring from an actual, you know, full fledged WWE star. Um, when you take Roman Reigns out of the equation, it's kind of like then he's kind of like going up against like other enhancement talent. We have Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose embroiled in their own thing. He faced Kurt Angle this week, which to me was like a good main event. Uh, he squashed him. He fucking squashed him, dog. I like. I mean, I liked it. From the fact that the story was Kurt is old <laughs> and he, he put up a fight, but at the end of the day, he's like Drew McIntyre is still like the young chipper, you know, uh, monster who is like really just kind of like tearing up things on Monday nights. So I, I like that from that aspect. So from Drew McIntyre's monster push, which I mean, I, I agree. I, th- I think it's good. And I think it's going to give him a chance that he didn't really have uh, his first time around in the company. Uh, from there, we have Seth, who is uh, who I think is a bona fide star, uh, and they they're kind of booking kind of like the fall of Seth Rollins because of just his obsession with this Dean Ambrose thing. Uh, he lost the tag titles by himself this week to uh, AOP, who are not, they're now just calling AOP, not Authors of Pain. Yeah, I mean, I think AOP is like cooler. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's because Authors of Pain was to me not cool. Um, it seemed like something that like an eight year old made up, but it I always MOP. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> yeah! Oh Maybe my God, be. that'd be right. fire. That would be fire, and also a lawsuit. Um, <laughs> it, you know, <laughs> first <laughs> Oh my God! Um, I, you know what? I like AOP. Been in tag team champions. I mean, this is what we've all wanted, apparently, through life. Everyone has yeah, wanted. Yeah, everyone has just wanted them to just come in and just win the titles. And here and they are. There you go. You got it. Finally, there you go. Are you happy now, motherfuckers? I thought uh, Seth Rollins versus AOP in a, in a handicap match was great. By the way, I, I do you feel like they they get, he got, he had like so much time like they gave him a lot of time. They gave him like, a lot of yeah. You it's know like, it's, he should be ahead. squashed. He should have been squashed, right? No, nah, well, hmm, I don't know because Seth is really a resourceful guy. <laughs> like he's a resourceful guy he's like in the ring he's able to like i think i mean how many matches have he had where it's been like two on ones where he kind of just been flying around i thought a great finish would have been like he goes for the frog splash um other guy pulls him out and they just kind of end him from there but it, even still the match itself was pretty great um and you know still dean ambrose doesn't have a match to survivor series <laughs> Oh, he's definitely coming out for the the Nakamura set thing. I think that's that's a given. It's a, you know, how do you feel about the Nakamura versus Seth match? Are you are you looking forward to it? You think it's going to be something that's like good? Do you think that we're going to put our working boots on? Like, what are we doing? Nakamura will put his working boots on against Seth. Um, I think again with Nakamura dream matches, you don't need a bunch of hubbub and. You know, uh, in a lot of these Survivor Series matches, you don't need a lot. I, I, I think it doesn't need to be booked in two weeks. Or, I mean, it doesn't need to be booked in six weeks. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, I think last year was the most effort they ever gave to this, ever in life, with the Under Siege shit. Listen. But um, I, I think that this match is going to be good. I think it's going to be really good. I think your mileage may vary. I think Seth will most definitely be in New Japan mode. <laughs> during this match oh he's uh, lit <laughs> it's just a give it's, it's just a, a question of whether nakamura will be as well and i and i think he 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 um usually kind of uh scales up to his, his competition 
usually mm-hmm. I think his Jeff Hardy matches were okay. Um, I also think that the Sami Zayn match is still his his uh, his pinnacle. And I think if you give them 15 minutes, I think he has the potential to do something uh, equal to that. So I'm, I'm pretty excited for that match. I, I think it's a sleeper to me on that on the card. Agreed. Um, moving on from SmackDown, uh, we we have Ruby Riot doing. Uh, and no, I want to raw, talk about raw, this. raw. We're talking I'm sorry, raw. not SmackDown. It's like Raw. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We're talking Ruby, Raw. I want to talk Ruby Riot's uh, <laughs> Ruby Riot uh, ending a match by stepping on some sunglasses. That was so weird. What a, it was. What, I it, it's perplexing. I I think when me and you get into a to a altercation, I'm going to take one of your weights. And I'm going to just throw it out the window. Well, first, you would never be able to do that. Wow. Second, <laughs> <laughs> wow. Second, okay. Second. Um, that was so weird to me because the match just ended. Yeah. There's the, no the, bell. The referee threw it. Out. <laughs> he was, it just ended. It was just like, well, yeah, she's I crying. <laughs> She's crying. Like, how, what do I do? I count her out. Like, imagine be the dig bag referee who's like, she's like bowling on the outside, and he's just like eight, <laughs> <laughs> nine. nine. <laughs> Ten, you're out of here. Oh my god. No, I, what a I I I get where they're going with the Ruby thing here. I, I thought it was that, you know it's good development because they haven't really done anything like terrible. Yeah, they they've been just like assholes. Well, here's my thing, bro. Here's my thing. I might I might be a little bit uh, raw here. Dude, we're speaking about raw. She shouldn't have brought the sunglasses to the ring. You know <laughs> she how you show them off. You know how your mom says, "Don't bring the good toys to the park." Ooh, that's definitely happened because I remember in second grade, I had um, Power Rangers. Um, Power Rangers Megazord, the Mighty yeah. Morphin Power Rangers, by the way. And I had yeah. all five pieces. I brought um, the Red Ranger Zord, the, the T-Rex one to school. Yeah. Wow, Teacher you took rich. it. You rich. Te- that's all I got for Christmas. I literally oh, okay. got Power Ranger toys. Okay. Um, I was that. I was a nerd. I was a stand for Power Rangers. Um, I literally brought it to, to school. My teacher found it, took it away, never gave it back. Ever. And like... <laughs> That's the centerpiece of like the entire Megazord thing. Yeah. So if like you it's don't have chest. that, yeah, <laughs> you ain't got shit. you ain't got shit. Like I can lose an arm, I can lose a leg, I can't lose that part. So I lost that part. Um, couldn't get it back. Um, essentially, probably just got another Power Rangers thing the following year. But I could imagine how Natty feels. I can't cry the way she cried because <laughs> the drool. Yeah, that was wild. <laughs> That's that the. Whole- dr- <laughs> That whole vibe, <laughs> that whole vibe, that whole like that, during that segment was like the way she just started spitting up, and I'm yeah. just like, bro, no. I, and we shouldn't be like, la- like, listen, all right, we shouldn't. Be I'm laughing. like, I shouldn't be laughing. I was like, yo, am I going to hell for laughing? But I'm like, also, <clears throat> Natalia, is this what you think crying is? Like, did uh, you also, watch videos on TV of people crying, and you like got to get some spit in? But but Natalia, you have tangible memories. <laughs> you have memories that like like pictures of him like you have other shit (laughs) you have other i'm sure there are other sunglasses he could not have worn one and yeah it looked like the cheap (laughs) i don't want to disrespect (laughs) i don't want to disrespect um you know the dead but it didn't look like you know this is the apparently the worst you know what it was sentimental value there we go that's how we're doing it sure i guess uh, that's just weird. I'm moving on. Um, you want and they're like Becky and like Sasha's just like awkwardly consoling her, like it'll be okay. Like <laughs> and she's like, she's like, God, she's like 36 and she's just bawling <laughs> Bro, on the man, outside of the ring. She shouldn't have brought the sunglasses to the ring, man. I, that's all I'm saying. It's just, but you actually have memories of of your. You know, I don't know. Maybe, you know, people mourn in different ways, I guess. Mental value, man. These are sunglasses that mean she brought them on the European tour to show off to everybody. Yeah. A night. And then she brought it to the ring. And they broke the glasses. And that was it. I mean, you know. (sighs) Good luck. Good luck. Uh, Good luck on that angle. I don't know where that leads to. (laughs) <laughs> Good luck on that angle. Uh, you want you want to speak on the the 
Nia Jack stuff. I I I don't really like care about it. I mm-hmm. I kind of tuned out. All right, so here's a here's a here's like a couple things we can run through the Nia Jax Ember Moon thing. Nia Jax has apparently teamed up with Tamina. Um, you know, I don't know why anyone would team up with Tamina, but she has. Tamina and- gets in free before eleven. <laughs> 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 just like everybody else i guess um yeah to to be down ember moon uh, yeah there's not much about it i don't know what they're doing i think they're just repositioning her meanwhile ronda's doing something else it was like we got to do something with naya or we got to build up naya so naya's i guess a jerk again um very silently a jerk it's just silent <laughs> um did you watch the elias Dolph ziggler match uh yeah I, I thought that elias really uh Really did his thing in that match, man. Turned up. I didn't watch it. I just <laughs> paper, it looked good. He, it's a good match. I think they got a lot of time. I'm glad Elias won. I'm I'm really really cool with uh you know what they're doing with him as a as a face. It was so natural for him to be a face. I think that I I didn't expect it to be that natural. You know. Right. Um. It, it was a good match though. It was really good. Was- I, I would go. I would go back and watch it. I think I think Ziggler can make anybody look good. Yeah, I think at this point, I mean, even if you don't necessarily want to see him, he makes anybody look good. Yeah, I, th- I, I think so. Um, you had Apollo Cruz versus Jinder Mahal. Apparently, Apollo Cruz was getting some sort of push because he's just getting a lot of solo airtime on Monday Night Raw. I fucks with it. Um, fucks with it as well. We had Bobby Lashley versus Finn Balor for the umpteenth time to set up their mixed match challenge match <laughs> for the umpteenth time. Get get Balor out of the mixed match challenge next time. Oh yeah. You know what? But everyone loves him. That's why he's in it. Everyone wants to be his partner. Come on. Such a nice guy. He deserves better. Um, but before we get off Raw, uh, Ronda's promo on Becky. We're gonna we're gonna kind of go from Raw to SmackDown here. Who do you think had the better promo, Ronda or Becky? Not yeah. Ronda. Not you thought that Ronda was shaky. I thought, you know, I thought both of them <laughs> could have used work. Ronda was like the way she holds the mic, like she's about to like spit a sixteen. <laughs> I'm not like. Oh, my God. Right, come on. Um, also, it seemed kind of she's getting better on the mic, but it also seemed like. And I'm going to kill it. Like, it's like it's too the way it's it's not natural. You know, people don't speak like that. Yeah, she's a very she's a very loquacious uh, badass. <laughs> yeah, she's like, she, she got to make sure that her eyes are like mean and her mouth is mean and her braid is mean. And like I'm tough, and I mean business. Like that's how it, it's. It looks fake tough. Like it, that's actually not tough at all. Um, <laughs> Look at Meals episode yeah. fifty five saying that Ronda Rousey's not tough. Listen, I'm just saying she doesn't appear the way the entire facade of having to prove you're tough. It makes you look less tough, you know. Yeah. Like you, you know, I remember once there was like Brock Lesnar and Dave Bautista in the ring. And he was like, that's a, you, you see, but Brock Lesnar walked by and he was like, that's a badass. Like, and Batista, you're, you're not, like, you're not, even though Batista kind of is. I don't know. Um, Yo, Becky, he be, Batista got his ass whipped. I don't know, bro. Yeah. yeah. It's multiple occasions I've heard. <laughs> um, whereas Becky Lynch. Becky Lynch has been barring her up all week. Yeah. I mean, it's easy to. She has. <laughs> <laughs> It's plenty of material. I think we're all, you know, <laughs> everyone has chosen to ignore the big elephant in the room that Ronda Rousey's in the WWE because she could not, you know, <laughs> win anymore in the UFC. Yeah. And everyone's kind of tiptoeing around that. But that's really the bar. That's the bar. That's the ether. They're saving that for mania. I'm sure they are. <laughs> They're going to save it for Charlotte and it's going to be delivered. Not as, oh, well, yeah. not as good. Like, listen, this is Charlotte's line. Like. You don't get to say that. Find find some other cool shit to talk about. But yeah. uh, Becky seemed, you know, very, very interesting in this. And I like the way that the segment actually transitioned. It was really, really yeah. good. It, it, was, it, was a good, it was a good transition. Uh, and it led to Nikki Cross. I think Nikki Cross had the coolest debut of anybody from NXT. Oh, yeah. Just to... Uh, coming out the smoke and all that other stuff. Like, that shit was dope. Smoke. Come on. <laughs> She I wanted. She came, came out the smoke. smoke. Yeah, she came out the smoke. Won all the smoke. Listen, I loved it. Um, Nikki Cross. I mean, everyone's just like, "Oh, she lost in five minutes." First of all, her debut matches against the champion. Second of all, it's in Europe. 
Third of all, she looked great. She looked really good. She 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 got a lot in on, on Becky. This doesn't seem like it's a it's a full call up either. So I don't think people should be worried about Nikki right now. You think it was just a call up for the crowd to pop the crowd? It's the same shit that happened when Charlotte showed up and she lost to Natty and tapped out. <laughs> <laughs> that was but that was like an NXT preview match. I feel like this it could lead to an actual call up because I just feel like Nikki Cross is such a character. It's like why not? Um, I don't, I don't think it hurt Nikki though. But she isn't. She isn't even doing anything on like NXT. I mean, she's done. Uh, I think she's done. I think she's she's really she, done. Like she got one more. I feel like she's got one more thing with uh, Candice that she might want to get out. She's dark. Nah. Oh, I guess right. Maybe yeah. she's dark, Candice. Maybe. All right. I don't know. Dark, uh, Candice. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I thought Nikki, Nikki and Becky was really cool. It's, it's a sign of things to come. I'm glad. I'm just glad Nikki was on the show. I think people should just be glad she's there. I think, um, yeah, quite honestly, it, it adds another element to the roster. SmackDown, SmackDown's roster is not bad. It's I've, a, it's the best roster on in the in the company. Considering that you have all these women, you actually use all these women. You have meaningful programs and deliver when you can. You give them personalities. I mean, the iconics are iconic in themselves. Um, I love the pose. We got to do the pose when we first meet. Like, oh, please, can we? Can we? We have to. Oh my god, we have to. The iconics. We have absolution teasing. You know, a breakup. Their, their breakup. Yeah, I, I like that segment. It's teasing more broken Charlotte. Uh, Charlotte not being, uh, t- not being herself. Uh, it's the story that I've I've kind of been guessing what they would do, having her lose against Becky and then having her kind of regain uh, herself at the at the Royal Rumble or. After the Royal Rumble, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're going to, she, she didn't win it last year. They got to let her, let her win it this year. Yeah. I mean, she couldn't enter it last year, but she's going to win it this year. Um, speaking of that segment, yeah, they announced that um, the, the SmackDown women's team for Survivor Series um, on the team, we have Charlotte, former SmackDown women's champion. We have Carmella, who, you know, got a nice little pop, nice little entrance. Um, People love they, her now, man. Yeah, I mean, it's it's hard not to love her. It's really, I think, uh, the, all the character development as a heel, and then just tweaking it and turning her into a face and pairing her with Truth, easy, easy layup. Yep. Um, Naomi, um, former women's champion herself, Asuka, that's mm-hmm. a that's a that's someone who's badass. And then the fifth and final member was, what's her name again? <laughs> Sonia Deville. <laughs> I buried the lead. Oh my God, Sonia Deville. I think Sonia Deville. To me, um, I'm a fan. <laughs> I'm very much a fan, brother. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. I'll just say that I'm a fan. I think she. In I think she has. I think it's good that they kept her away from like Ronda Rousey. Yeah, kind of like. It's not that they both have the same sort of deal going on. But like one clearly hits harder and does like <laughs> worse submissions than the other. You were always spicy today. But, but but everyone's gonna come at me. They're gonna say I hate women. I know it. <laughs> you are spicy today. You are very spicy today. But I, I think. Do. Listen, I I I I fear for your mentions. I fear for your your uh your look in the chat this week. I do um, like Bill. Um, I thought Mandy Rose, you know, coming out and like pretty much like, you know, boom, you're roasted to everybody. Um, <laughs> was the inter- was interesting. <laughs> uh, um, like, I mean, it was a cool segment. I'm glad that the women, the SmackDown women, are out. They got they got one more week to kind of <laughs> to yeah, run through. Them. <laughs> Do you think that ba- Sha- 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 Sasha and Bailey are pretty much? A shoe in for the women's roster, right? They're announcing it on Monday. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. To me, they held off of announcing the Raw women's team because they weren't sure if Alexa was going to be on the team. So to me, stalling and figuring out will Alexa be good enough to go for Survivor Series or because she's the team captain, but she's not on the team. Yeah. And and, and Corbin is the team captain. He's not on the team. That's weird. Um, But It'll, you know what? I don't know if they're locks. No, I, I, I think Riot Squad or someone from the Riot Squad is at least there. Who would you put? Like, really? It's like I mean, Ruby. Ruby's like barely ever leaves, uh, loses on TV. So, 
you have, but you also have like Mickey and Alex, Alicia. They're not going to be on the team. I'm, I'm sorry to break it to you. They're not going to be on the team. You also have Ember Moon. You have Nia Jax. You have um, what's her face? Tamina. Yeah. Uh, I think of- Nia and Tamina are shoe wins. I don't know. It just doesn't look very on the Raw. The Raw the, I, I think SmackDown's winning again this year. Honestly, SmackDown's got to be winning. I mean, they didn't win the last two years, so um, they, they should never win. <laughs> nah, they, they should never win. I, I think Raw's Raw's fine. They're already like they have Ronda. Why the fuck do they need to win Survivor Series too? Exactly. I like that. I mean, shit. I don't know. They. They. I just feel like. SmackDown women needs to win, and uh, the Raw did, did SmackDown men win last year? I can't Smackdown remember. SmackDown men, all right. No, Raw won. Raw won. Oh, Triple yeah, H. Triple H. Fashion. Yeah, New Triple yeah. H. Like pedigreed Kurt Angle. I watched it the other night too. Very that was bad. A long, that was a long ass match too. That was a bad match, by the way. Bad compared to the Survivor Series one before. Like that was a bad match. Um, but yeah, it's a you know it'll be interesting. Can we let's head over to the men's side and see what's going on over there? Yeah, uh, AJ and Brock is official. I think we mentioned that earlier. Um, not before, not even giving a prediction away. Do do you, how do you book this match? This literally happened a year ago. <laughs> you mean the once in a lifetime part two? Yeah. Uh, how do you book this match? I'm very upset it's not Roman AJ. Let, let me just be clear. I, I'm, I agree with you. I thought they would have had a fantastic match, and I thought it would have meant well, and it would have been a lot of pride and stakes and all this other stuff. And, like, I think I could beat you, Roman. Like, it would have been. I can't say that word no more. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been one of those, but now we get, you know, the match we got last year, which yeah. is fine. It's fine. It was we a great won. match last year. I, I went four on it. I think I went it's four on it. I think um, Brock Lesnar is smart enough to know that he could give AJ a lot more in this match, considering AJ now knows him a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you do you bring out weapons this time? Make it no DQ. That's I mean, you cannot have the exact same match, and that's what we're heading to right now. <sighs> Brock Lesnar is preparing for UFC. I don't think he's willing to get hit by anything, really. Well, fuck it. I, AJ needs to win this match. I don't give a fuck. And I'll say it this week. I'll say it next week. AJ needs to win this match. I agree with you. I think AJ win this match. Give him something. Give him something. I don't give a shit. AJ needs to win this match. Period. I, yeah, I agree. Um, and the, the, the overarching story of SmackDown this week was the men's Survivor Series team. Uh, it was announced that uh, but from Shane and Paige that Brian and Miz That's were going to be the co- Yeah, they were going to be the co-team captains. You know, I like that aspect. I mean, it's it. And on one hand, it's like, yes, they're team captains. They are forced to work together. It's like this buddy cop thing. Second of all, they should really hate each other a lot more. But they don't because they're. <laughs> I think the funny thing is that, like, they're enjoying working with each other. <laughs> yeah. And I thought that was fun. It's a, it's interesting. It's an interesting take on all of this. I mean, no doubt Miz gets petty and then he, you know, skull question finale is Brian at some point during this entire thing. Oh, like, absolutely. Because they're, they sh- they're on the team, right? They're both on the team already. Both of them are on the team. They yeah. announced they, they picked Shane McMahon for the team. So Shane McMahon is now on the SmackDown team for the third year in a row for Survivor Series. Um, The fourth member they picked, we had a great match. Well, I would say a good match. Not great. Good. It was a good match. Rey Mysterio versus Andrade C and Almas. Everyone's been wondering where, you know, Almas has been on SmackDown. Everyone's just been like, when's the Ray thing going to get set up? I think we got a precursor to that. Um, I thought it was a good, you know, sample of what we could possibly get when these two get in the ring together and they're doing great. But Rey Mysterio won the match and now he'll be on Team SmackDown. Yep. Uh, and then we had Jeff Hardy versus Samoa Joe, where Samoa Joe gets his win back um, from a couple weeks ago. Um, to join Team SmackDown, and he immediately gets in Daniel Bryan's face. Gets in Daniel Bryan's face. There's a, there's a big Donny Brook. Uh, Miz comes out to to help because he's like, listen, why would you ever see the Miz is smart? The Miz is an asshole like Daniel Bryan. Wow. Uh, okay. Well, who texts your own team member? 
The Miz is just trying to be like, yo, well, don't attack Well, Joe member. attacked him after the title match. Oh, we could didn't attack him. Joe instigated, like he, I, I would say provoked, non-physically. <laughs> <laughs> but I think Daniel Bryan should have walked away. You know, well, this, this is all to me setting up some big turn with Shane, bigger than anything. Uh, Shane what do you wasn't about that news. I don't like. I I never liked Kid Shane as a heel. I thought he was a dick. I think that directly uh, hinders Paige. Yeah, I think Paige is doing such a great job. You don't you like? Why would you have a man? kind of ruin that I, I i think they need to tread very carefully with what they have with her mm-hmm. especially when it has to do with him and i think that if you do do a heel thing have it only be a mania thing and mm. then you move and then you move on and have and have page become the gm of the show but why are we making why are we making shane mcmahon heel again i okay so realistically it wouldn't be brian shane right it'd have to be they couldn't do that, right? I mean, they wouldn't be that stupid, right? No, I hope not. But then it's kind of like, but what's the point? Like, really, what's the point? Like, well, what if you align Miz and Shane? Then, I mean, at that point, that's how he gets the title. I feel like Shane thinks he could kick the Miz's ass. Um, <laughs> but so I don't know how that would go, but uh, it's just. The the entire news surrounding Shane McMahon's heel turn, I'm not thrilled about it because I feel like if they wanted to do a heel turn, they should have done it last year when they were trying to tread that line between is he a jerk for attacking Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens? Um, because now there's really no story for it. It's kind of yeah. like he entered it. His, his entire heel run, the basis for his heel run is for what? He's already, he already is like the head of SmackDown. Yeah. What more power does he need to consolidate? Um, I would much rather them keep him face. I think yeah. he's still a he's still a popular character. I I think that making him win the or having him win the World Cup thing was kind of eh, shaky. I I again I don't no I, one gave a fuck about that tournament anyway. Didn't matter. So no <laughs> one got fired. After, yeah, and then and then after he won, people cared. I was like, what the fuck? Like, pick, make up your mind. I like, was what? dumb. Yeah, like no, nobody gives a shit about this tournament. Like, trophy looked cheap too. Uh, yeah, God. like whatever. Uh, but yeah, I mean, essentially, I, I think a, a heel turn would would kind of hinder Paige a lot, and I think Paige is one of the best things on that show. I and, agree. Uh, I and agree. I, I think you keep her where she's at, or you either move her up and at the expense of Shane if you're going to do that, at the, and that and have that be his comeuppance. Um, one one other thing that happened: the the Usos and New Day figured out their uh the the tag team rotation for the uh, Tag Team Survivor Series elimination match. I don't know why that's a thing, but... <laughs> it's excessive. <laughs> Ten people? It's going to be like it's gonna be like a nine-minute match. It's a, Survivor Series is a four-hour show. They've done it before. They've done yeah. it before. Um, it was a good match. I'll give it that. I'm just not a fan of the match. <laughs> I just think it's a lot. Who do you to, put? Who do you put on from Raw in that fucking match? Shit. AOP's taken. AOP's taken. So we've got left on in, in terms of SmackDown. We got the revival. Oh uh, uh, yeah, the uh, Lucha House Party. Lucha House Party. It has, and it has to be. Oh, well, it has to be a team of three for five on five. Real, it's not five. It's a five on five match. I, I think thought it was five team. It's five tag teams. It's five literally th- five tag teams. Oh yeah, it is five tag teams. My bad. I I I I'm fucking drew a blank. It is five tag teams. Wait a minute. So who's gonna fill up SmackDown side? Sanity? The rest of SmackDown. What are you talking about? There's like five teams on SmackDown. <laughs> Sanity, right? It's gotta be it's gotta be Sanity. It's gotta be um who Wow, else? who else are the tag teams there? Oh, the club. Remember the club? Oh yeah, those guys. Those guys. Um <laughs> <laughs> Your assholes. Um, uh, holy shit! Hold on, hold on. Which who are who, who the fuck? Who's on SmackDown? All right, the Bludgeon Brothers are not there. Let's just get that out of the way. Yeah, they're, they're, they it's impossible. They can't do it. So we have. I mean, Ty Dillinger's gone. So that whole our truth, Ty Dillinger, bad you know, bad buddy cop thing is done. 
Um, wow. That, who, is someone going to get called up? I don't think there's any more teams. <gasps> Wait, no. I was about to say Sheamus and Cesaro, but they're the champs. Um, <laughs> the, Cologne, the Colognes. There we are. Boom. Oh, wow. Colognes. You just got to. You just Smackdown, have to, Smackdown's you know. fucked. <laughs> you, what? With the Colognes? Relax. All right. Who's on Raw? All right. Raw. Tag teams on Raw. We have um, Bobby Roode and Chad Gable. Oh, yeah. Those guys. They're always teaming up. Those guys are always together. We have the revival. We have Lucha House Party. We have uh is Heath and uh, Rhino still a team? Yeah, uh yeah, they are. They are. Yes, they are. They are still a team. And then we have Oh man, this is terrible. This is gonna be a bad match. Rough. Uh Fandango's injured. Oh god, where do we go? This is going to be a bad match. I'm going to randomly be like Zack Ryder and No Way Jose or something like that. <laughs> no way, bro. That's what we would call it. Boom. There you go. See? Yeah, I don't know, man. That's 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 going to be very interesting to see. But I, I think the New Day and the Usos had a really great match. Oh, uh, I, I, I think it's impossible for them to have a bad match. Let's call up a tag team. Whatever. Ooh. Heavy machinery. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Tuck Tucky. I would love Tucky to, to show up. Oh my God. Please keep them away from my television. <laughs> <laughs> Steaks and weights, motherfucker. Steaks and fucking weights. I know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But you know what? That's Survivor Series. This is the outlook for Survivor Series. I'm still excited for it. I think it's going to be good. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be a really good show. Um, once again, we will be running through. Uh, the whole show. So I think pretty much next week, fuck SmackDown and Raw. We're going to yeah. just break down the whole, sh- uh, every show uh, next weekend. You think we get an invasion next week? Someone on SmackDown shows up on Raw. Someone on Raw shows up on SmackDown. Red shirts, blue shirts. They don't even have teams. So I would not lean into, I wouldn't lean into a, a, a takeover. I mean, SmackDown has their team already. I think they set up SmackDown team so they could show up on Raw on Monday. Mm. The Raw side of that, the Raw side of that is like, I mean, I think, I mean, obviously Finn's a shoo-in, right? Finn and Bobby. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Finn and Bobby are shoo I mean, Finn was there last year. Yeah. He lasted really long. That's the team. That's the team. If Finn and Bobby are in, that's the team. Yeah. So. And then SmackDown shows up. I don't know how they get past Braun Strowman. I heard Braun Strowman got bad knees, so ooh, ooh, ooh. they 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 probably can. I don't know. I don't know. Who knows? Um, uh, yeah. But we we'll see next week. Uh, but as far as this week, this has been the week in pro wrestling and everything else. Uh, Meals, you got anything to say? This episode has been plagued with so many technical difficulties. It's, it'll be interesting to see how we put this all together. <laughs> <laughs> we'll come up with something. We will. Uh, we will fix everything and, and and put it into a perfect little uh, bow for all of the listeners of the A Show. And once again, thank you guys for listening to the show once again. Thank you for listening to everything on RNC Radio. Just this week, we had another episode of uh, RAOP Gaming with Amp and Eric. Uh, Eric threatened me on this episode. Did you hear about that? No, I didn't hear it yet. So I got to hear this. I, I'm he, gonna- he, he, he threatened to put me through a table. Ooh. So the, these young niggas, man, come on! Wow, oh, <laughs> first damn. one of the first, second one of the new season. Jesus, Jesus Christ! I almost made it the entire episode. I'm sorry. Yeah. He, what Eric? The damn, he's a he's a de- demon. Demon jit, they say. He's a demon jit. So yeah, the the gauntlet has been thrown down. Maybe I might have to show up on Raop Gaming. Maybe, uh, maybe, maybe. Who knows? Um, but yeah, we had that episode uh, th- this week. Uh, Mills, what what have you got going on on your side? So we're, we'll have a new episode, actually, of The Lookout coming this Friday. Um, yes. We're going to have a special guest on it. I'll tell you who it is after we finish recording. But I think people, you know, who generally occupy the same space of The Lookout will know who this person is quite well. I'm excited. Um, I know who it is. I'm excited. Um, we will talk to, uh, you know, what? I'll save it. Um, <laughs> this week, we have two belts. 
Two Bills is back. Um, Two Bills will be back on Sunday. Actually, you know, I'm going to give it a little, you know, sneak peek here if you're a fan of Two Bills. You will actually get two belts for two weeks in a row for the next two weeks because of the holidays. So we are not taking off three weeks because of the holidays. We're just going to record two episodes back to back. So you guys will be happy to get, you know, all the new music for the next two weeks. Um, So stay locked into that. Um, We also had RSPN that dropped this week. Shout out to Jeff and Mark. Um, also, perfect play Fridays as usual. We had yeah, by uh by alt right Huey, alt right Huey. Shout out to alt right Huey. <laughs> the Halloween episode of Late Fees was pretty incredible, man. You guys did amazing things, man. Yeah, it was. Uh, I actually got confused because I thought we were doing Late Fees this week, but because we released it early uh, last week, we're, we're waiting. So next week, we actually have, uh, and I can announce this now, um, since we're on this show. And we're going to be recording it uh, next week anyway. It's going to be a wrestling themed episode of, of Late Fees. Uh, I I really want to integrate you in in, in the episode somehow. Uh, but we're going to be watching two wrestling based movies, so just keep an eye out for that. It's going to be really interesting. I hope one is ready to rumble. Oh, you just you picked that. That's one of them. That is one of them. Okay, I haven't seen the movie in a while, and I need an excuse to see it. All right, boom. I've never seen it. I've never seen it. So that's right. going to be really interesting. Yeah, I've never seen Ready to Rumble. Here's how here's how old uh, Ready to Rumble is. Our truth is in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! But yes, that is coming up. Late fees will be uh, happening next Friday. Uh, but next week on the A Show, we will have a special guest. Uh, the homie Mega Ran will be on the show next week. Uh, we're we're solidifying a time that we're going to record with him. And uh, yeah, we're going to be talking Survivor Series. So uh, tune in for that. We're going to be back next week with all of the latest and greatest in pro wrestling with the Kings of Pro Wrestling podcast, uh, Meals and myself, Justin. So until next time, we'll see you next week on the A Show. Happy Rusev Day. <laughs>